We are live at the Star in Frisco, and we're honored to have you join us. We will spend as much time as it takes here. Uh, we'll have fish at six uh, tonight live as well. But uh, here's an opportunity for us to um, kind of feel maybe a little bit what McCarthy and Dak felt and other players after the game, after the loss. Not enough of a uh, cool down period. And so they go to a hot mic and they say hot mic things. Dak Prescott, of course, has apologized for his uh, preposterous assault on the referees, verbal assault on the referees after the uh, beer bottle and trash throwing assault by a handful of unruly Cowboy fans. Good on Dak. Now let's see if Mike McCarthy can help us make sense of all the other things uh, that happened Sunday. And then, because there's so much to unpack here, and we've got time to do it, uh, he obviously delved into some things that are beyond uh, just what happened Sunday, and we'll that too. We'll do that too. Um, blog on everything, and it's encyclopedic. Encyclopedic. Maybe I had to just go there, but uh, I've got my notes that I've scribbled down. I've got my thoughts in my head, and we've got your questions here as well. If you are interested in offering up a question, a comment, or a criticism, I invite you to do that. You can, of course, pitch into the brief fund. That is the super chat that YouTube has set up. You could also hit the like button. Uh, I know that we do this every day at 720, and um, the, the audience is enormous, and the response is enormous. That's nice. We do it every night at 6 p.m. Same thing, fish at 6. This is a little bit of a wild card at 315. Keep in mind, if you're missing part of this live, this will be housed permanently uh, on the fish report, and you'll be able to find it that way. I have put up links uh, on a couple of uh, places, including on Twitter and on Facebook at Fish Sports. I hope that if you come here uh, from those spots and maybe it's your first time here, uh, you behave in a civil manner as we almost always do, except an apology from me. In learning this morning at eight o'clock that there was going to be a 2 p.m. press conference uh, from the Cowboys uh, regarding Mike McCarthy, and it is his season final press conference, uh, we got a little bit too cute. And the thumbnail we put up, now I thought, I mean, and I thought, I had a winky face on it when I said, McCarthy, fine. And uh, I thought the winky face made it pretty clear. And uh, enough of you responded by saying, by saying, Fish, that's a little clickbaity. That's not really your gig, is it? And you're right, and I'm wrong. Uh, tried to get a little too cute, the same way I've accused the Cowboys uh, on offense of doing, and uh, please accept my apology for for, uh, for for thinking that the joke was as obvious as it clearly was not. That's my bad. That's on me. It'll never happen again. The number one storyline, certainly, is Mike McCarthy's job security, uh, which is why I asked the question. And as you know, I don't, over the course of 32 years now, I don't uh, ask a lot of questions in the press conference. Uh, I'm perfectly comfortable if it's a question that simply has to be asked or I know it's going to be asked or or maybe it's a little mundane or somebody else is going to ask it. What do I care? Hold on a second. There. Let's get a little mood lighting in here, a little romantic mood lighting in here. Let's also, of course, make sure we clean it up. Okay, here we go. So, um, but that's too blurry. Son of a bee. Forget it. <laughs> but the question that had to be asked, and I certainly trust uh, my, my trusty friends in the DFW media, it was going to get asked, Mike, what about your job security? What has Jerry told you? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? What do you? And so uh, we did pose the question with a follow up. And then I hope you uh, understand where I'm sitting. How, how, how many do I need to hammer him eight more times trying to seek clarity? Uh, maybe. But uh, but but two questions is where we went. And, and I hope that you view that as being a fair attempt at trying to get clarity uh, out of the coach. So here's exactly what I asked, and here's exactly what he said. Fish, in your meetings with the Joneses, 
because they, I know they've had them. I ask McCarthy, have you been given clarity on your job security? And amid all the rumors and the gossip, can you please share that clarity with us? And Mike answers, I've had a chance to talk to Jerry after the game for a long time and obviously saw him again Monday. And that's the normal Monday staff meeting that we've talked to you about many times. We had very positive conversation and just the focus on the evaluation process. And I'm listening to this like you are, and I'm thinking, and? And so I followed it up and I said, and so therefore not an issue? And he said, I don't see it that way, meaning I don't see it as an issue. I'm focused on the exit interview process. And this is as close as we're going to get uh, in this moment to clarity. And no, it's probably not close enough. Is it unusual for a team to have to announce that its coach who has three years uh, of a contract running is going to come back? That would be unusual for there to be an announcement, except Mr. Jones, Jerry, has made this unusual. Uh, by not offering clarity on Sunday when the question was asked. Had he, had he said, well, of course he's coming back, then that would have been the end of that. So this lingers a little bit. McCarthy dangles in the air a little bit. And Jerry's going to be on the radio with Sean and RJ uh, later this week. And, and, and then Sean will take a stab at what I took a stab at trying to do. You can pitch into the brief fund, of course. Roba Tochan wants to know why the heck it's called the brief fund. Um, but I will explain it to you with a pitch in from Roba Tochan of $499.99, a $500 contribution. And Robo, uh, you, you've earned the right to have us explain. Bree Amaranthus, uh, who's a valued member of our staff, uh, is grossly underpaid for all the great jobs she does. And so I use her name to represent the 75 member staff, the guys that work uh, under me at CowboysSI.com, which, by the way, uh, CowboysSI.com on Monday. 941,000 Cowboy fans, a million Cowboy fans in one day went to CowboysSI.com. And so uh, when you pitch in, Roba, uh, whether it's $5 or $500, uh, that helps fuel our work here. And man, oh man, is that appreciated. That's extremely generous of you. Uh, go out, Roba says, and buy yourself some peanuts. Marsha, unfortunately, is washing right now, and she wants me to get the unsalted version of which uh, uh, for, there's no purpose. Jeremy Fryson says hello from Pensacola. David, I'm disturbed that McCarthy's lack of recognition that there's real problems need to be addressed. So let's go to issue number two, which is penalties. And again, I felt obliged not just to ask the question about, boy, there sure were a lot of penalties, which is a valid question. What are we going to do about it? And uh, Mike says, number one priority, got to clean that up. Pre-snap, whatnot, got to clean it up. I think the important follow-up, in addition to, I suppose, well, how, how do you do that? And we'll get, into the, we'll get into that with Mike in our next conversation with him. How do you, what, what's the how? We all get the what. You get penalized too much. You're breaking records for penalties. Breaking records. So yes, you got to fix it. And then the how we, that we should, I probably should have asked that uh, again. There's another mea culpa from me. But I did ask what I think is even more important than the actual penalty, because those do happen. Gosh, I know Micah Owens. Uh, Randy Hoffman now has somebody that wants to outbid him for my services. <laughs> it's on. And of course, uh, $2 or no dollars or $200, uh, any contribution, is, and including $0. That's fine, too. Uh, we, we, uh, I ain't too proud to beg in, in, when I sing Motown, but uh, we don't need to beg here. We do need to remind you of um, our desire that you hit the subscribe button, however. That does make the world go round. And if you want to hit the like button as well, that beats the algorithms and tells people that we're here, tells Cowboy Nation that we're here. Uh, we will get to 45,000 of us. This has been about a six month process. And we're told this is the fastest growing Cowboy uh, YouTube channel in the world. And that's thanks to you. So I asked McCarthy about the mentality that I believe has seeped in to the Cowboy locker room among its leaders, which is that when we lose, it's not really our fault because the refs did it to us. And he he did acknowledge that as a 
compelling question, but does not acknowledge it as a problem. Uh, we're going to have to disagree on that. And again, I look forward to further conversations with him so we can get, get into a little bit more depth on, on whether he really doesn't see what I see or what I, what I think you see. Robert and Lisa um, and others with the same theme. And I had somebody, okay, uh, boy, I wish I could tell you who this is. This is one of the most prominent cowboy personalities of all time on the field, in the locker room. I wonder if the world adulation of the Cowboys hurts the team. And I wonder it too. I, I wonder if you think you're focusing, you think you're disciplined, you think you're ready, but you also think that your smelly armpits don't stink because we're the Cowboys. I believe it's a problem. Bob Smith, hello from Phoenix. And go Chiefs, uh, as always. This shocks some people when I say this. You can come on here and be an Eagles fan. I don't care, as long as you're civil. Or if you're going to be a troll, be funny, and please don't be repetitive. And so, yes, this goes to your point about being too comfortable. And so he makes that great point. Pure blood. why didn't you guys challenge coaches' knowledge of ball resetting at the end of every play? And um, pure blood, I'm I'm with you and I'm again you. The question got asked so many times that I quit deciding to I decided to quit asking. And Mike answered it every time with an answer that I do not think is correct. I, I think the referee does have to touch the ball. You can't just give it to the center and run your play. I know you can't, but that's what Mike seemed to insinuate. He can stick with if he wants to. Hey, we knew what we were doing on the play I, I, with the play call. But it's hard to insist that we knew what we were doing when we thought that we could just snap the ball whenever we wanted to. And I hope you understand, again, this is the reality of the press conference setting. If we're if me and Mike McCarthy are sitting having a beer, I, I'll ask him 18 straight times. Yeah, but uh, this setting is a little different. Some courtesy is Merited, and there's 12 of us in there asking questions. So I hope you understand. George Morton, Uncle Fish Premium subscriber. You can be one too. Uh, $1.99 gets you into the Uncle Fish Premium Club, and I treat you like the Joneses treat Will McClay and vice versa very, very well. Uh, there is going to be uh, thousands of people that have watched this video over the next couple hours. Um, by midnight tonight, it'll probably be 15,000 people. If you would like to be one of the first 100 people to hit the like button, I'd appreciate it. On the count of three, if 34 of you would please hit the like button, that would be delightful. Uh, Rich Ott, it blows my mind that no major moves have been done yet. I have no idea, Rich. You're my guy. I don't know what you're talking about. What major move do you want to happen? They're, they're not, they're, there are no major moves to happen. Um, coordinators are interviewing for other jobs. That's what's happening right now. Um, nobody has taken you more inside the Kellen Moore and the Dan Quinn interviews, Denver and beyond, than Cowboys SI and the 75-member staff have. If you want information on Kellen Moore, Dan Quinn, and more, just search it. Uh, Fish Report and search that name and watch what comes up. It'll be everything. Uh, Mike talked specifically about the growth of DAC and the belief in DAC, and that's okay. First of all, you you, sh you shouldn't say it any other way, and you're stuck saying it this way, and so let's make it work. Completely endorse that. But as you could tell in my uh, fair-minded question, what about, what about play calling, Mike? What about you being more hands-on in all of it? And uh, he said specifically to my question about play calling that, we, he, he now believes that this is the way to do it, that the offensive coordinator should be the play caller. And again, if we're in a bar setting, then I might go, well, then, Mike, why don't you just be the offensive coordinator? Because you need to get your hands on this. It's you. It's you that's going to go down. You'll notice Kellen Moore and Dan Quinn are going up. You're going down. R.H. Luis. 
pitches in 499. Jimmy and Parcells didn't let players get comfortable with themselves. There, there's some mythology here, but I think generally that's true. Now, we live in a little bit of a different time, and I don't think you can ask every coach to be Bill Parcells or Jimmy Johnson. They have to be themselves. But Mike McCarthy was earlier in his career in Green Bay when a mistake was a hard ass. And that's a fact. And privately, he'll tell you that. And I don't know that he's doing that now. I think now it's a, there's, there's a little more, to, uh, a little more, I'm going to treat you like an adult. That's Barry Switzer's way. There's a place for all of it. Bob Smith, what would the Cowboys have to give up to get Sean Payton? Um, we broke the story in December of 2019 that the Jones family, through back channels, looked into the acquisition of Sean Payton from the Saints as Jason Garrett was going out the door. So nobody knows it better than we do, and nobody did it first before we did. I will, I will tell you that there is always been a little bit of fire under that smoke. I will tell you that there are rumors that Sean Payton is debating what he wants to do now. And I don't think it's irresponsible, given the smoke, to say that maybe Jerry's twiddling his thumbs just a little bit, just in case. That is not my forecast. That is not my prediction. Um, my prediction has always been since before 2019, someday Sean Payton will work for the Dallas Cowboys. That I believe. David Gola. <clears throat> Do you believe that if Quinn leaves, which uh, is highly likely, uh, Denver has zeroed in on him for two weeks now, that the Cowboys will consider bringing Mike Zimmer back? Mike Zimmer, friend of this show, I, I think that'd be terrific. Um, it's more likely that they stay in-house George Edwards and Joe Witt uh, um, being elevated from the staff up to being coordinators. I did ask McCarthy about that, about the readiness for that. Uh, and he's very proud of the fact that he builds, as I mentioned, tiers of coaches. This age of coach who can do this, this age of coach who can be his heir, and that age of coach who can be his heir. Uh, George Edwards is of the older variety. Uh, Joe Witt's right behind him. Th those are two guys that can do this job. Jose, Cowboy fans are funny. Sean Payton has one ring. McC Mike McCarthy has one ring. And Mike went to more NFC championships. You're, Jose, you, you, you couldn't say it better. We create in our minds an image of a guy. And we won't let go of the image. It do, uh, doesn't matter. We we um, we we paint ourselves into our corner. We crawl into our echo chamber, and we keep wanting to believe what we thought was true yesterday. No matter what happens tomorrow, had Mike McCarthy won that game, had Dak Prescott thrown a twenty-six yard, five deep route hail mary, and somehow it bounced off somebody's head and into Amari Cooper's hands. We would not be having any of these conversations about Mike McCarthy. And yet he will, would have done it and will have done exactly the same thing that he just did. Uh, the Kevin O'Connell story um, and where he's at in his interview process, you guys are bringing this up. Uh, go to uh, TexansDaily.com and we've got the exclusive there. Um, I'm, I'd be careful, Tid, to say, uh, T said, to say, Sean Payton's no nonsense. They couldn't get Michael Thomas on the field this year. L listen, none of these guys are really genius geniuses or else they'd be curing cancer. Uh, th these guys are bright. These guys are hardworking. And um, in many cases, these guys are good teachers, good strategists, uh, colorful personalities, or... Um, Leaders of men. I, I can imagine why you think that the leaders of men jury on Mike McCarthy in Dallas is still out. By the way, regarding the play calling, my question to McCarthy was, was even included the specificity, is that the word, of what if Kellen Moore leaves? Then would then would you take over? The, and he's suggesting that the next play, the next offensive coordinator, will be the play caller. And I've given you the name of Doug Nussmeyer as a good one in the building. Um, no surgery yet for Michael Gallup, injury wise. Ezekiel Elliott. We told you a long time ago that <laughs> he had the ligament tear on the back of his knee. Mike McCarthy on job speculation. 
I know what I put into this. And I think this is an important answer when we hear some people that don't know what he puts into it say, yeah, it looks lazy to me. I, I, I wonder if you mean he looks lazy because he's heavy set. Is that why you mean he looks lazy? What are we talking about? I know what I put into this. I understand what goes on here every day. I know how to win in this league. I know how to win playoff games and how to win a championship. That's pretty good stuff. So if you're looking for a powerful, so some of us are, oh, it's just coach speak and jibber jab. That's pretty powerful stuff right there. Want me to do it again? I know what I personally put into this. I understand what goes on here every day. Let's be fair to him and pretend this was Coach X saying this. And if you just, if I told you Sean Payton just said this, if he was under fire and I told you he said this, you'd go, boy, that was a, that's a powerful statement right there. That's bordering on cocky. It's so good. It is good. I know what I personally put into this. I understand what goes on here every day. I know how to win in this league. I know how to win playoff games and how to win a championship. Let's give him credit for that. Shall we? He also said the Cowboys were nervous. And that's not coach speak. Jose Christian, John Hanna, it usually takes two years to recover from this is an this is a PCL. It's a ligament in the back of the knee, pure blah, uh, or Jose. And from the people I've talked to, surgery for Ezekiel Elliott is not planned. Take it easy. Oscar. Uncle Fish Premium subscriber. Good job, Fish, for all you do. Uh, it, it, it beats uh, digging ditches. And I've done it. Talentless medic. Why Doug Nussmeyer? I, I, I think he's capable and qualified. I also think he can be an authoritative voice. I don't think Dak needs to have a brother as is, as is the main guy in his ear anymore. Uh, assuming Kellen, if Kellen Moore stays, then, then there, there's wonderful things about that. But assuming Kellen Moore leaves, Kellen Moore's replacement should not be a peer, a sounding board. It should be his boss. Robert, what do you think of Charles Haley's statement? I don't put very much stock into Charles Haley's statements. I am fascinated by Drew Pearson's statement that Dak Prescott is a $40 million disappointment and that he thinks he's regressed and that he has some concerns about him. Now, Drew is an emotional guy, but he's also a, a straight shooter and he's also a clear thinker. That should, that should concern you. That should concern you. Big text, what about Coop being traded? If you don't want a $22 million wide receiver, why does somebody else want William, what's your reaction to Troy saying they need to get the ball to CeeDee Lamb? There's no question about it. Um, but, okay. hey, you need to get the ball to CeeDee Lamb more. Okay. Hey, you need to get the ball to Okay. Hey, what about well, Cedric Wilson? I only got one ball, and my quarterback was throwing it sideways. Chip, I hope that's addressed your comment and many others. Nick Neff, we need to address a running game. There's a lot of people who, who uh, um, know their football who say you don't need to do that anymore. That game proved they're wrong. San Francisco's ability to run the football was central to that game. And you couldn't really stop them. And they could really stop you. I repeat, there is no plan. And again, we, we told you this a month ago. There's no plan for Ezekiel Elliott to need knee surgery. There's no reason he can't come back 100%. Uh, Chauncey Goldston, ankle surgery. Brandon Smith, the practice squad wide receiver, ankle surgery. Uh, McCarthy addressed the thing about Pollard and then CeeDee Lamb, I kind of too, it's the same answer. You could probably say that about a couple of guys. We needed to get them the ball more. Keep in mind, however, in the case of CeeDee Lamb, and I'm sure Troy is aware of this, he's dealing with some dropsies. 
I think it's fascinating that McCarthy says, number one, I haven't watched the game in detail. Not much, you know, not too much to learn. I mean, he doesn't need to watch it Monday to learn from it. He'll get to it. And then number two, that he doesn't really plan to watch the playoff games. And when he's not in the playoffs, never does. And does that convince you that he's into it? I'll tell you the guy, the, the coach here, the only coach here that I ever knew that wasn't really into it was Bill Parcells. And it's ironic that people think he's the one that was. Bill Parcells wasn't invested in this city. He, he was he was a mercenary. And that's okay. Good for him. Jerry needed him. He needed Jerry. Gilbert Benavides has gone into the uh, new Uncle Fish store, which you can find at fishsportsnetwork.com. And he says, I've ordered my straight dope, no bullshit t-shirt, and I've ordered some face masks. Uh, yeah, jump in there. It's fun. It's really cool and fun. Uh, Broken Halo has put together a store for us. fishsportsnetwork.com. Uh, go get you some. Uh, T said, they, uh, Coach certainly sounded like uh, everything's fine with some of the personnel, the, certainly the locked in contractual personnel that they have in the offensive line, but there is no disagreement that this offensive line played under its ability. I've been saying, I, I don't, I didn't think Zach Martin had a great year. Again, this is my layman's eye. I'm not a scout. The people that are scouts will tell you that Tyron Smith has not a great year and Collins, and this is more about behavior and the rest. You know, Lyle Collins gets you. You can't tell me that Lyle Collins has been a focus guy the last two years. That would not be an accurate portrayal of of Lyle. He, he has not played to what he is capable of doing. I I would like to think that Lyle over a pe diet Pepsi. Well, notice we're skipping the beer there. We're just having diet Pepsi. Would admit the same. McCarthy, we are going to be better next year. We did not reach our goal. We are going to be better. Uh, Rico C with a $5 pitch in. Did I miss it? Why did no one question the offensive line play? Uh, I think the issue of Tyron came up. William S. Once Lyle got paid, he lost focus. I don't usually think that's a fair accusation, but you'll note that while some other guys go, oh, he, he got paid and any, you know, Tank Lawrence didn't. Stop trying. He just got hurt. Lyle Collins, it can be uh, suggested, last year got hurt because he wasn't trying. I think we've covered it. Uh, if you want more depth um, and you want to just sit down and read it, you can do that at CowboysSI.com. Almost a million people did that on Monday. Uh, it is the um, most successful project that Sports Illustrated's ever done. And uh, I invite you to be a part of that as well. Thank you for hitting the like button. That was very nice of you. Wabi Sabi with a 99 pitch in. Aikman's comments seem to me to be more about Kellen's inability to see what's happening in the game and then taking advantage of mismatches. He's too married to the scheme. Uh, it is a fair uh, assessment that people inside this building agree with that uh, Kellen Moore's running game is very predictable. And then I think it's, a, and then there's other people that recognize, and I think Kellen will too. I think Kellen, I mean, listen, if we could talk about it, he knows it better than we do. Smartest coach in the room. He's going to look at it and say, man, they look at their safeties back there and look what their defensive line did to harass our quarterback. And we still couldn't run. Lyle Collins says glib at left guard. And yeah, we have pushed for that idea. He he could be not just a good left guard. He could be a great left guard, but got to stay in shape. Got to pay his toll tag bills. And got to not get accused of bribing NFL officials. Uh, we will be back with you at... 6 p.m. tonight, Fish at 6. We'll do it live. Brandon Banda. I wish my name was Mike Fisher. I know. It's pretty sweet. 
I can't tell you the number of my friends, including you guys, that think, I got a great idea. You should do a T-shirt called Fish. You should do a segment called Fish Sticks, uh, a T-shirt called Fish Lips, uh, uh, a, th a thing called Hot Mike. Let me tell you something. My name's been Mike Fisher for 60 years. You think I haven't heard them all and thought them all? All that Fish Lips, Fish Sticks, Fish Heads, Fish Heads, Roly Poly Fish Heads. I heard it all by the third grade. It's all These are all fifth grade popsicle stick jokes to me, but I appreciate you're trying to uh, boost what we do here. Will you please tell your friends what we do here? Uh, we're going to get to 45,000 subscribers momentarily. When we get to 50,000 subscribers, you will not believe the cowboy gifts that we will. So what did we do when we got to 30? I gave away a $1,000 Hall of Fame autographed Dallas Cowboys stadium seat. I just For no damn good reason. And we're going to do it again here pretty quick. So stick with us. Little Joe, Uncle Joe uh, pitches in at $4.99. Thank you for that. Oh, good. Here's a suggestion. Jose, rotten fish. See? <laughs> Angry cowboy. Fish heads, fish heads. Eat them up. Yum. J1, why don't we just dock players uh, pay for penalties? You, you could come up with a system of punishment that maybe should just include, listen, if, 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 you, if you're if you a goofball twice, I'm going to bench you. That's harder to do now than it was in 1990, though. Harder to do now than it was in 1942. So you'd like to come up with a way where the players are self-motivated. And I think this group doesn't lack motivation. I, I think the problem that plagues this group and the problem that plagues this organization is they believe their own press clippings. They bathe in it. That's the problem. And, and that's an America's team thing. Uh, uh, Michael Irvin famously told me years ago, and now it's that, 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 that thing's gone viral that, that he talks because he talks about a lot. Your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. The greatest strength of the Dallas Cowboys is that they are America's team. The greatest weakness of the Dallas Cowboys is that they are America's team. We'll see a fish at six in a little bit. Uh, tell your friends and let's get back on in here. Fish out.